Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a non-fiction bookshelf tour. So this was requested a couple of months back when I put out like a shout out for video ideas and I'm going to be showing you all of the non-fiction books that we have in the house more or less, um, the non-fiction red shelf and then my non um, like actual full bookshelf and then my non-fiction individual shelf for my kind of TBR. I won't be covering any of my ebooks in this one today, it's just going to be physical books. Um, if you wanted to see my updated like e-reader TBR I'm more than happy to do that at some point, um, just let me know in the comments down below. So I'm not going to put out every single book and read out like name and title because those things are just a nightmare to edit and it's not my job. Am, but I am going to do a bit of a scan for you, maybe talk about some of my favourite titles. Um, you could always play a game in the comments of which books are mine and which book are, books are Andy's because um, we combined all of our books when we moved into this house. So the, t the non-fiction shelf is probably the closest to like a 50-50. The fiction ones are overwhelmingly mine but the non-fiction Andy had a lot more stuff so it is a fairly even split and it is very interesting which is his and which is mine. So we're going to jump in and yeah I'm just going to show you what's going on on the shelves. Okay apologies if anything's a bit wobbly so first things first to get out of the way is the uh, pot that my dad made. My dad is a ceramicist uh, or potter depending on what you want to call him and uh, yeah so we're just going to shuffle that out of the way. So we're going to start in the A's. My uh, non-fiction shelf, like all of my shelves more or less, is organised alphabetically, loosely. There are some where it's like by name of who it's about. So like this one is about a guy called Abramovic. It's written by these two people but the big title is the Abramovic so I've put it there. Um, I'm honestly thinking about rearranging my entire non-fiction shelves and putting them in genre um, order rather than in... Uh, alphabetical mainly just because it, it can be quite hard to find things at times and you get things like this which are kind of a bit hit and miss there's some which are called anonymous which kind of I find quite irritating um, they're just under A and then like I think it'd be easier to find things but I don't know if I can be bothered and then you get the complicated ones of like where does say David Attenborough go does he go in like biography or nature writing I don't know so let me know in the comments down below what do you do how do you arrange your non-fiction uh, but yeah so we're gonna scroll through so like I said uh, got the anonymouses here um, and then we just keep going some iconic terrible non-fiction there that is Andy's um, and some economic stuff you'll notice a lot of wrestling biographies and football biographies that are his um, there's one of my favourite books The Pig That Wanted To Be Eaten it's the reason I took philosophy at university there's also Simon Blackburn's Think which is another like classic philosophy book um, we scroll over and we get some some bigger titles over here uh, then we come down a level and I pop this back out of the way we have again one of my absolute favourite books The Rise and Fall of Dinosaurs by Steve Broussat gorgeous, potentially needs to be up a shelf but these shelves we can't move so some of the books are where they are because they don't fit on other shelves that becomes more apparent later um, and he's a big fan of like political figures as well so he's got like books on Castro and people like that so we kind of go through some Clarkson's of course uh, my only, no, one of two non-fiction graphic novels, which is cool. Um, and then going through, we have the Caitlin Doughty's that I absolutely love. That mindset one is actually mine. Most of the like mindset stuff on this shelf is Andy's, but that one is mine. And it's specifically about growth mindset, which is a really, really cool way of like looking at the world. Um, then we have to move my cute, funky art picture of a rabbit crossed with a stegosaurus. I don't know the artist, if I did I'd link them down below but there's nothing on this that says who they are and I got it such a long time ago. And he's got quite a few kind of fitnessy books, so the four hour body is there, he's got a couple of the four hour books um, which is interesting and that one is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race but it's really hard to see. Cracking book, so we'll pop that back there. We bounce down and we find Terence the Tarantula. Hi Terence, who was a tarantula but now officially is an insect because two of his legs fell off and look they're down the bottom actually I think one of these is a mandible look there's like one on the pot he's suffered quite a lot but he's from like the 1920s moving down I bought him in France on holiday years ago I have quite a few of the penguin orange spines and these two are actually nicely next to each other if you wanted a whole video on my penguin orange spines both on my TBR and my red list do let me know, that's something I'd like potentially like to do because I do find myself inadvertently gravi gravitating towards them quite a lot in non-fiction is Watching the English which is an amazing anthropology book about um, like the British public by Kate Fox, read it years ago, still think about it 
Um, as we scroll through, that little cheeky one in there is uh, My Childhood by Gorky, which was a, um, it's an autobiography of Gorky, who was like a Russian writer in, I think, the like 1890s or something kind of around there. Um, yeah, really interesting, read it for dad. And like a challenge I did with him way back at the beginning of my channel. Uh, I can pop Terence back up where he belongs now. Then we scroll through uh, a bunch of footballer Let's In this shot, how many footballer ones do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, six footballer books in one individual shot. Yeah, Andy has definitely got a type when it comes to books. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, oh, that little cute one in there is uh, Hiroshima by John Hersey, which is amazing. It is a um, like long form essay about his time visiting Hiroshima after the nuclear bombing. Um, incredible, very moving, very powerful. That's actually one of Andy's um, orange penguin spines, which is about innovations of the modern world, which is kind of cool. Oh, trying to put it on another book. Ah, bugger. I wonder if I can be bothered to cut that out of editing. Cute little pop from Ikea with some fake flowers because I can't keep real flowers alive. Uh, then we drop down. Lighting's going to get shocking, most likely. So how are we doing? Um, yeah, so again, some more football stuff in here as well. Soconomics is actually awesome. It's one of the few on Andy Shop that I have read. Like the economics and kind of um, social factors within football and the football industry is really interesting. But I do not enjoy footballers' biographies as a general rule of thumb. Um, and then we keep scrolling through. Freakonomics is another Andy one, which is awesome. Um, very cool, kind of look at various economic explanations for people's behaviour. The Cabaret of Plants is stunning. Look at that cover. Um, sadly, I never actually finished this book. This um, was a pick for Springathon last year. It is so beautiful. It's got illustrations inside. I love the cover so much. But it was really boring. <laughs> it was actually about, like, the art and like literature significance of plants rather than like the science of plants and I just wanted to learn about the science of plants. Um, I have quite a few books, well I say quite a few, there are a couple on here that I haven't actually finished and I never know whether to keep them or not because um, sometimes I do talk about them in videos still. We keep scrolling through. A uh, bit of Tim Marshall, very iconic. We have another Tim Marshall book about flags somewhere but I don't know where it's gone. Um, Prison's Geography is excellent. It's about geopolitics. This one is particularly about Iraq. And no, no, sorry, it that's about uh, the Russian, like the Soviet Union. Yeah, pretty sure that's about the Soviet Union. Um, and he's read it. I haven't yet, but I want to because I really enjoy Tim Marshall. I actually need to go through all of these shelves and find ones that are technically his that I haven't read yet that I want to. I pulled out a few and put them like on my TBR shelf so I remember that they're there but I haven't done it for all of them. Um, that one's mine, what they don't teach you at Harvard Business School. Very interesting. A lot of it is not overly relevant anymore because it's kind of pre a lot of our like serious tech and kind of communications internet time, but some very interesting theories in there. I read it when I was running my own business, very cool. Um, one of my books that was from university, I did a load of coursework on that. Um, and then we drop down another shelf. Oh. We have um, Farmageddon is amazing. I totally recommend um, some of Andy's more like and and PLO books and things like that. Um, we go to my collection of Mary Roach books, of which I have five, and one day I will finish off her last one that I haven't read, which is Gulp, which I don't own. I don't think Andy has a kind of mini collection. These great commanders of and then insert time period by Andrew Roberts. He's only missing one. Um, but he really enjoys them too. They're like mini biographies. He quite likes military history. It's very classic blokey stuff, isn't it? This is the collection of books that are too big to go down on the other shelves, even though that they are not in alphabetical order, and it pains me greatly. Then we come down to terrible lighting and shoddy angle work from me. Uh, the only other non-fiction graphic novel I have is there, Persepolis. Very interesting. Um, I don't, I'm not convinced I finished Hysteria, that might need to come off and into a TBR, that could be a history challenge pick, it's about the history of the concept of 
hysteria. Oh, I had the hiccup there. Uh, book on Stalin. My my <laughs> my camera is desperately trying to focus on Stalin's face. Actually, um, some Simon Sinek books. Andy's quite a big fan of Simon Sinek as well. Uh, he's an interesting good guy. I've watched just a few of his videos. He's quite big on again businessy stuff. The game. Honest to God, absolutely no idea why we have that. That is Andy's. I think we've got a book by Trump somewhere. Around. Yeah, we've got the art of the deal coming up later. Um, bunch of my books which I really like um, yep yeah, couple of Donald Trump books which are Andy's I think he bought them pre-presidency um, Andy's read a decent number of things where he's just curious about the person rather than necessarily about like you know following their ideas if that makes sense um, you've got Gary Varnick Vanek? Vanek? he's another like biz big business person on the internet um, you've got Danny Wallace's Yes Man, like, okay, yeah, here, it's so like these two, I didn't actually finish, should I keep them? I have no idea. Um, and then you've got the Lucy Worsley Talk to the End, and I need to read more from her. Um, so those are all of our non-fiction shelves for red, so let's now jump over to my unread shelf. Okay, so this is my unread shelf, ignoring anything that is on my current monthly TBR, because that is by my bed, I have a little stack there. Um, and anything that potentially is downstairs from filming. So actually on my um, TBR shelves, I don't do things alphabetically. I do them loosely by genre, but I think the non-fiction shelves got a bit mixed up. So we've got um, some medical ones and some kind of social justice-y sort of books. They probably should be moved around. I could tidy this whilst I'm here. Should we do that? One-handed tidying. That and that should go together. Uh, that actually should probably go all the way over here. We'll get to that in a sec. Anyway, sorry, shaky. So yeah, so these are like medical slash medical history books. Up to about here. We've then got some paleontology ones. That I think that's all of my paleontology ones in one go at the moment. Um, I don't actually have too many on the go right now. Then we have um, kind of some nature writing stuff. But I think it's got all jumbled up. Yeah, it has. It has indeed. Right, we should fix this. So, book on seeds, that's a fairly new one to my shelf. That's, those two are nature writing as well. And those are nature writing. So that needs to slide over there. And those need to go in. Ah, this is so hard to do with my non-dominant hand. Enjoy my tidying up. Um, got like a classic non-fiction there, that's George Orwell's Down and Out in Paris and London, where one of his non-fiction titles, I really need to read that um, this year. This one's a new entry into my shelf that I don't think we've seen since my latest haul, it's about the AIDS epidemic. Um, really, really interested in reading that, but it is a chunker and it's tiny text. Same for that one actually, chunker tiny text, and that one chunker tiny text. So. This is a stack of very intimidating non-fiction. Um, I, I have The Joy of Tax, which I genuinely started like a couple of years ago, really enjoyed, and then just put down for no reason. I was supposed to get to it in April and totally didn't. Um, so that's almost like my random, uh, like, yeah, just random non-fiction. We kind of then have my little bracket of like, um, inadvertently kind of like queer non-fiction. So sort of that's inadvertently its own section there. Uh, then we have art and art history and literature um, and then some books on juggling. That's a new one as well. I don't think you guys have seen since my latest book haul. Um, where the hell am I going to put these? Eek. I might need to juggle some stuff around. Okay. Well, for now they can go there. Ta-da! Super organised. So, um, yeah, that's really it. So, shall we flip back around? Please enjoy just how bad messy the background is. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my non-fiction shelf. A bit of a strange video in some ways to film, but people were asking to see um, my non-fiction books. So here they are. They're in upstairs in kind of their own little room. This is our like office room that's become a bit of a dumping ground, as you can see from where we've moved and we haven't sorted it. I my, One of my goals today is to sort that. Um, so now I've set it on camera. That's like an intention set out into the world. There will be no footage of it sorted at the end no we're not doing that um so yeah so let me know if you saw anything on the like red shelves or unread shelves that you want me to try and prioritize let me know if there's anything that you'd like a particular review on um do feel free to play the game of any books that you think might be mine or might be andy's on the uh bookshelves um and yeah i hope you're having a wonderful reading week and i will chat to you soon bye